Hi, and welcome back to episode three of our painting together. Last week, you guys chose to do a rushing, very fast moving river with a lot of large rocks and boulders around it. And also thanks so much for all your support. Remember to vote this week for what we're gonna do next time. Let's get started. Now, as you can see here, I went ahead and just did a basic sketch with some brown and black. These are the rocks that we had in the, in the little sketch that you guys voted for. So now I just put them on the canvas. Before we get started with the rocks though, I'm just gonna load up my filbert brush here with some clear gel, white and blue. All right, and wipe most of that out on a paper towel. So there's just a little bit left in this brush. Now, this canvas down here is a little bit wet because we have some oil paint up, but here is dry, that was last week. So I wanna show you how to do some dry brush blending just for fun, because I like showing you guys new things. So anyways, here's our brush and watch how I can roll in. That's probably a little too much paint. Let me take some of that off. So if it looks pretty hard to you, see that looks a little hard. There, take off some of the paint. I'm gonna dry brush in some mist. This is the way that you create a soft effect over dry paint with oils or with acrylics. Really the same idea after they're dry. Now look how this, look how this works. See how you can feather these edges out? Now, we can really make this painting come alive when we do this. And we can also use this to create some extra depth in and around these rocks. Now I have a suggestion of a rock here. We can bury that in the mist. Good. Now I'm gonna scrub in with our filbert brush some very dark blue. This is just simply blue and black. And if you're wondering why my palette looks the way it does, that's because I was filming earlier today. So it's kind of a little bit dirty and I have some of this is actually leftover paint. So there you go. <laughs> it's fine though. It's actually probably good because normally when I paint, my, my palette gets dirty as we go along. Well, this way I give a variety of colors on my palette that I could use if I need to. Already mixed. There. I'm gonna just touch into a little bit of clear gel and go right back into our colors. So something that you guys probably will probably already know, but I'll just mention it anyways. You can go a little thinner here on areas that you know you're gonna let dry. Now, I'm not gonna let this dry before adding some highlight, but I probably will let it dry before finishing it out completely. So, you know, it's okay if we get it just a little bit thinner than normal. Ordinarily, oh, we gotta be careful. We're a little more loose when it comes to this project because it's over so many weeks. It's dry from week to week, so it's easy. There, I'm just gonna finish up throwing this blue in. There, now it's always good to finish up the water by just putting a little bit of brown here at the bottom and blending it in. And that's exactly what I've done right here. All right, simple enough. Now, let's go ahead and work on our beautiful rocks because after all, that is kind of the thing y'all wanted to see. So let me take some brown and some black and touch a red because we're coming a little closer. All right, mix these all together. And I'm gonna simply start shaping the rocks, placing the darks down where I know they need to be. There. We've got a, a waterfall, remember? A rushing waterfall right about here. There, well, I guess it's not really a waterfall compared to that thing, but you know what I mean, a little dip. Okay, maybe make that into a secondary shelf, I think just for artistic purposes, that'd probably be a little better. Okay, good. Remember this part here is totally dry, so it goes on nice and dark. Maybe we don't want it totally black, but we sure do want it close. <laughs> there we go. Now on the top, you don't have to shade the top like you do the sides. You know, you can go with kind of a mid-tone and stick right out on the top of the rock. And then when you go to highlight, it just will pop even more that way. So it kind of might help you a little. See that? Kind of throw a little mid-tone up there. Sometimes when you just do stark colors, all, you know, just the rock black and you just highlight with a light color. It kind of looks too harsh. It looks a little better, a little more natural. Sometimes if you put several colors into it. There. <laughs> this is fun. I love this. I'm just going to simply finish up creating just the basic outline of the rocks, the basic feel of the rocks. And then we'll come right back. All right, now we have all those dark rocks in. I want to just I'll go right here over to some light color. And... There we go. <laughs> this is fun. Just grab a little bit of light color and start working on some of our 
for bright areas. Well, medium areas. I guess we're still in the mid-tones. There. Now, this crazy looking rock up here. This is sort of my way to balance that waterfall a little, you know, have some sort of a rock and it's very close so it's nice and dark. And you'll notice I left this big gap here. See all this blank area? I left that in for you guys. I don't know what kind of trees we're painting yet, so I do think that's going to be our next one, so let me know. This is going to be really cool. Can't wait to see what kind of trees you want and what composition of trees. Not only the, the, the kind of trees, but the composition is really going to be important. So we'll see what you guys think. Next, I'll load up our three-quarter brush here with a little bit of yellow and white. And I'm going to go ahead and start picking out some highlights here. Maybe right, right out on top. This is certainly the first place I would think a highlight would be. There. Now let me kind of go over just a little bit of a, a couple techniques that might help you. Now, maybe, let me show you here. Just chisel your brush up really good. Nice and even. And then just pick out areas, not everywhere. If you do this over every bit of the rock, it's just going to look weird. <laughs> of course, we're not interested in a weird painting. There. And just touch it like this. Yeah, you're going to mix. It's going to pick up a little bit of the dark, but who cares? You can always highlight again next week. <laughs> or normally, if you're painting all in one day, you would just sort of wipe that down with a paper towel a little bit. I'm not even going to bother. I can always touch up the highlights next week if I want to. There. It's very simple. The lights coming across like this. Just figure out where you want these and drop them in. Not everywhere needs them. In fact, less is more, probably. Maybe right there. Nice. And this three-quarter brush is perfect. It just has a, a nice sharp angle. And you can just get these little rocks right in there. Good for big rocks. There. And although this isn't really a, this is not a training video, I will show you every now and then some, some extra tips that normally you don't get to see. There. And this is kind of one of them, just refining, kind of showing you a little more here how to refine your edges, and develop the light in the center of the painting, keeping it a little darker on the outside. All this is good stuff to know. The main objective here of this project and this, these videos uh, are really to have you work with me to create a composition. If you need help for any kind of learning, we've got some free tip videos and a couple of live videos that we did that you can go back and watch a whole painting or better yet, I really will teach you a lot on my DVDs. You can download those on the website. There. <laughs> this is just to have fun with you guys. And, and I'm glad you're enjoying it. Let's do a little bit of this action right up here. Not much, just a little, because remember, we're keeping the edges a little darker. Nice. I'm going to just repeat the same process to all the new rocks that we painted, and we'll move on to something else. One more thing I wanted to show you guys, and almost completely forgot about doing, is just load your three-quarter brush up with a little bit of blue and black and white and use that to just drop a touch of a shadow color here to the back of the rocks. Gives your, gives your dark something so they're not totally flat. That's generally a, a good rule of thumb. If you have a large black area, a large dark area of any kind really, throw some of this blue in, it helps. It breaks up the area, makes it look a little more professional, and that's all good stuff. Now we'll load up our three-quarter with a little bit of blue and white. Very, very simple color mix. This is going to be good for our water. All right, now, somewhere way back here, I'm going to start kind of in the middle here because I just don't know what I want to do yet. There. We may want another waterfall dip. I, I don't know. We'll figure that one out later. But right over here, oh yeah, look at this. Just bring it right over. See this? Light, light pressure. Otherwise, oh, it's going to be really, really hard and smudgy if you, if you don't use a light pressure. There. There we go. I like it. 
I like it already. You know what I really like is this rock, actually. See how that's sort of building up the feature of the painting here toward the middle? That worked out nice. Because <laughs> remember, I haven't seen this painting before. This is like a surprise to me every week, so it's kind of extra exciting. Normally I come in with a sketch or ideas of what I want to do. Sometimes even a full-on reference photo. You know, real places, but not this time. This time all I have is my little drawing. There. All right, now we're gonna wanna do some mist and water down here, but for now I'm just gonna start us, get us going. We can finish this up next week. I probably will, I don't wanna, there, I don't wanna go too long. There we go, this is good. We can put rocks and stuff, I think we should, because you guys wanted a lot of rocks. And you also wanted this to look really fast moving, which I'm gonna, which I'm gonna do right now. And also as the painting progresses, we'll work on that some more. There, whoa, look at this rapid water. There, I love it. Now let's wipe this brush off. I'm gonna refine this, I know it looks a little rough. I'm gonna refine this as we go. That little more paint, and right back here. Let's just get us a little waterfall, a little something happening. <laughs> Good. This is subtle. That's all I want. You see, a little bit of splash can be created just with the corner of the three quarter here. All right, and I probably don't want to spend too much time on this today. We got weeks. Other weeks we can work on this as well. It doesn't have to be right now. I'm just going to finish up this water here, and next time I will. We'll work on the river a little more, kind of finish off the river, make it complete, and get some more rocks in it. That's next time. And also, you guys have to tell me what kind of tree composition you want. We'll give you some, some options here. There, I can't wait to see what you guys want to do. And great job picking this one, I like that. This wasn't actually the one, my, my favorite was not this one, I'll tell you, but I'm actually really glad you picked it. It turned out pretty cool. I'm excited with it. So, so thank you so much for your input. This is super fun for me. There. And I love working with you guys because you have different ideas from me. So we're all kind of making each other better at this. And I love that. Hopefully you guys are getting some ideas with this painting for your own paintings too. Now it's time to look at our sketches and then vote for which one you'd like to see me do next. First off here, we have like a large grove of oak trees. Maybe this is a, the big one on the right where we'll put most of our detail. We probably won't have any evergreens mixed in, or very few in the background, but the emphasis will be on the large trees with maybe some light loose leaves and a lot of texture and detail. The next one here is a simple mountain forest with a lot of beautiful trees. The biggest one being that one on the left. We'll put most of the detail in that and make it really the feature of all the trees. And third here, we have a clump of birch trees mixed in with some evergreen trees, and we'll put more emphasis on the birch trees. The evergreens will just be there to sort of fill in. So there's all three sketches. Now you tell me which one you want to see. All right, well now we're done with our fast moving river with the large boulders around it. I can't wait for you guys to tell me what we're gonna do next. It's gonna be so much fun. Also be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and vote. Thank you so much for your support, and I can't wait till next time. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.